The Secret River is the story of a man who has never had the opportunity to own anything. Comes from Dickensian London out of deep and humiliating impoverishment and is sent here for a, a crime and does his time and then sees an opportunity to make a new life for himself and his family. It's my place now. Thornhill's place. You've got all the rest. So it's this meeting of two families, the Thornhills and a Darug clan, on the Hawkesbury River. Lily, here. One group, the Darug, has a very deep attachment to this country. Another is looking for their own attachment. It's food, mate. You eat it. Don't think he follows you, Dark. Tastes good, mate. Kate Grenville in The Secret River has yeah. imagined a history. Yeah. It gives us access to a part of our history that we as a community, we as a society have found difficult to talk about. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> is everyone set if we start? So we're going from the end of scene two. Tomorrow we'll plant those seeds for the corn. What's this? We've been here two days. Mars can't mop. William Thornhill was the, the centre of the book, and it was really his journey, and he remains the centre of the play. But the other thing that the adaptation has allowed us to do is to really reveal the story through the Darug point of view. So in Kate's book, the Aboriginal uh, community is very much viewed from a distance and through European eyes. One way of nudging that story out of the, out of the consciousness of, um, of the Thornhill perspective was to, to have a narrator. She's a witness to the goings on of not just Thornhill but also the Dara. Ursula's character is called Dirumban, which in Dara means uh, river, and specifically the Hawkesbury. It's a way of, of gathering the landscape and the spirit of the place uh, into, into one character that, that kind of then shares that with the audience. As soon as she stepped out on stage, I got a lump in my throat. She's just doing it with such care and such precision. We're very lucky to have her. I was very determined that Ursula should do it. I actually, you know, we talked, <laughs> we talked three times about doing it and twice Ursula turned the show down. I had to really think about how I would feel, you know, telling this kind of a, a story, which is quite dark and, it, you know, it's part of our history and, and just a matter of kind of looking after myself. And so I, that, they, they were the reasons that I said, no, I've got, to, I've got to look after myself. I can just go up and ask him <laughs> things now and just have, it, have a yarn, you know, whenever I'm kind of unsure or uncertain about something, I knew I was going to be looked after. One of the great strengths of Neil Armfield as a director is his casting. Uh, he has many strengths, of course, but he's very careful and very slow to cast. You look for people who, uh, where you sense an intersection between the energy of the character and the, and the energy of the actor. Nathaniel Dean has been cast in the central role of William Thornhill. The man did this, he'd be dug into a square. This ain't no square, it's just a lot of rooting around the place and that. After these taters, most like. They ain't taters. Sort of taters. Don't taste like no tater. What are you doing? Don't you go fighting things. You don't know what they are. They're both of you. Look sharp. Dude's not going to get done with us standing around talking about taters all day. He's such a big-hearted performer, but you can also feel danger in him. 
He's very engaged with the role, very engaged with the man's dilemma. It's a very painful story to tell. And it's not only painful for the Indigenous actors in the, in the show, it's painful for everyone. The first few times we read through the script, the first three times, I think, that we tried to run the play, we just had to stop um, and, and sort of abandon it towards the end because it, it sort of hurt so much. It was always sort of in, in, that, in that, the moment when Ursula has to describe um, the details of the, of the massacre. William Thornhill commits an incredibly evil act, or he participates in a very evil act. He's left and marked with the legacy of what he does for the rest of his life. But I had some friends that came in to see it, and they're not Aboriginal, but they said for them it felt like they were able to, one, take it in, accept it, um, digest it and, and th this is, you know, accepting that that's part of history and I guess being able to heal. I think every Australian carries one way or another a relationship to, to the trauma that happened. It's so important to acknowledge that because until it's acknowledged and, and felt uh, it can't really be understood. There's a beautiful little thread in the story which the tragedy is about that that thread gets cut. You see it in the development of the relationships between the children. There's just a, a wonderful friendship that grows. Dick starts to learn their language and they, they play together and there is this sense that it's in the children, it's in the future that change can happen.